Hi, everyone. Thanks a lot for having me here. So hopefully through the process of this presentation, I'll, com I'll convince you guys that I'm not a bookworm. But um, so I wanted to study, uh, start with this really interesting study that a friend of mine sent um, a while back. So this study found that which web browser people use was a great indicator for how well they performed at work. So I heard that, and I was like, oh, this is fascinating, because this has been a long-going kind of debate between a lot of folks. Some of you guys might not like the findings of this study, but <laughs> it found that uh, actually Safari and Chrome, uh, actually Firefox and Chrome users perform well over uh, Safari and IE users at work. And this is not because of a technical advantage. So all the participants in this study have similar typing speeds, similar computer knowledge, similar educational backgrounds. And so really, I was puzzled as to why this was the case. And it turns out what made the difference as to why some really well exceeded in work time performance was how they obtained the web browser. So Safari and IE come pre-installed on Macs and PCs. So for people who use these two browsers, really they accepted the default option. Whereas for Safari, I mean, as for Firefox and Chrome users, they really kind of questioned the default option that was available and asked the people around them, well, is there a better browser that we can then use? and really kind of was a little resourceful and found something new to use. And so while this was a really small shift in mindset, it turns out it made a significant difference at work. So they well overperform in terms of commitment to work. They stay 19% longer. They also miss work 15% less. And generally speaking, it made a huge impact. And so in other words, they questioned the status quo. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and so as a VC, we spend a long time thinking about uh, behavior like this, and we really notice that some of the best entrepreneurs who we work with exhibit similar behavior, where I see them always asking questions of why and why not, and constantly asking if there's a better way of doing things. Not just one thing, but everything. And so while with the findings of this, study, the first thing I did was obviously I went and upgraded my phone, my web browser, all of that stuff. <laughs> but then as a next step, we really thought long and hard about kind of a bigger and messier question, which is how? So we know we should question the status quo. We know that that's the first step to, towards innovation. We know we need to do that. But then how do you do that? So after doing a lot of research and talking to a lot of folks, we really found kind of a pattern where on one hand, for things that involve a lot, of, uh, a lot of skill, it really requires a lot of practice. So obviously for something like swimming that requires a lot of skill, you just need to be at it every single day. But on the other hand, for something like innovation, where there's a lot of luck and chance involved, it really requires a really strong routine. So you wouldn't think that that's a case for something as creative as innovation. But we really found this to be the case, because you can think of the process of innovation as input and output. You really need to constantly expose yourself to new ideas and new ways of thinking in order to generate new ideas. And then obviously you have to practice this process of generating new ideas in order to generate good ideas. And so as VCs who invest in innovation, we really spend a long time thinking about how can we build a strong routine for fostering more innovation because we're really contributing to shaping what the future will look like. And we take this responsibility very seriously. So we've done a lot of internal brainstorming and work around what we can do with this. And so today I thought I would share with you guys one example of an internal routine that we've developed in order to foster more innovation. So over the past while, we've been running a series of dinners called Teach Me Something I Don't Know. So that looks like a crazy acronym, but it's named after a famous Freakonomics podcast. Um, and this is really where we invite a lot of different members of the community to come in and share with us uh, about all of these different topics. And we ask a lot of questions, and in a casual setting, we just have really in-depth conversations where people can uh, really kind of throw out new ideas and, and just chat with one another. So most of the people that we have over at these dinners have no overlap with VCs or even startups, for that matter of fact. A lot of these folks can be PhDs or full-time engineers or just really different members of the community. And a lot of the topics that we cover uh, can either be directly work-related, where we talk about emerging technologies and artificial intelligence in blockchain, or it could be completely not work-related at all, where we talk about personal hobbies, such as gardening, which is a personal passion of mine. Um, and so 
To be honest, this dinner really wasn't easy to get started because it's really hard to convince people who usually don't have any overlap with the venture world or with the startup ecosystem to think about why they should come to a dinner where there's like totally random people out there. But perhaps it was just the lure of free food that worked, um, but we got a lot of people to come in and started having some really fun and inspiring conversations. So um, we're really glad that we were able to do this, which really gave us fresh perspectives into just thinking about day-to-day -day things. Um, even things like, how should we think about the stock market? Why did it do crazy things when um, there are certain events that happen? And so um, I thought it would be great um, to hear about your guys' ideas now that I've shared with you guys some of our ideas around innovation. So it would be great to have you guys reach out or come join us at one of our dinners. Hopefully you'll find free food, at least, interesting of an offer. Um, and um, yeah, I would love to continue the conversation with you guys afterwards. Thanks so much for having me here. Yeah.